Welcome back to Work with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow, where no one is worthless, no story is worthless, and we are here again with Hollywood Hustle, Myth versus Reality. And my next guest, who I'm about to talk to you all about, um, just a few words. Actress, writer, producer, mom, ladies and gentlemen, Miss <laughs> Sadika Camille. Welcome to the show. So just to give you all just a little brief interlude or whatever, um, Sadika and I go back to Illinois State. As a matter of fact, you know what, I think it's homecoming, so shout out to the homecoming. There you go, all right, see, I did my shout out. So um, we're just going to get right into it, if you don't mind, okay? Um, For the sake of our audience, where are you from? I am from Shy City, Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. Okay, all right. All right. Well, very cold, very cold. So, um, and talking about LA, why did you choose to come to LA? I mean, you could have went to New York, you could have went anywhere else. Why did you choose LA? I chose LA, one, because of the weather. Okay, the weather. I am from a very cold city. And the other reason I chose L.A. was because, honestly, mm-hmm. I did a film when I first got out of school. I was very, very blessed, like, when I first got out of school. Okay. Um, because I was able to do this film, and it just took off. And so everybody, it was called One Week. If okay, I was going to ask. Online. All right. So it was this film, One Week, and it was my first thing I auditioned for when I got out of school. I got the lead role. And just did it. I just wanted film experience because, mm-hmm. you know, our school was mostly concentrated in theater, so I had never yes. did a film before. So I was like, let me just go down to this audition and audition because I've never done film before. Ended up getting the lead role, and I remember the director called me. I wasn't able to go to Acapulco for the screening. Um, okay, the Acapulco, Acapulco Black right. Film Festival. Okay, um, there we go. back in the day, um, and. They told me we won. It just became like this big thing, this um, film. And everybody in the film started moving out to LA. Well, I couldn't because uh, I got pregnant. And so I decided, and I was like, oh, let me stay home. But everybody was moving because it, it had picked up momentum and wow. everybody was just moving to LA. And then I was like, I can't because, you know, I found out I was pregnant. So it was always kind of in the back of my mind. And then another time I even tried to move out to LA and I just had to end up coming back. But it was just a period of time in Chicago where, I love Chicago, like Chicago was great. You know, we have great theater. Um, Films were coming to Chicago, Mm -hmm. but it was never, uh, like you could, you know, you you could maybe get, you know, you weren't gonna get like maybe the lead roles, but you could could act in a film and things like that. And I just felt like, oh, Chicago, I was comfortable, but if you wanted to take it to the next level, um, need to, go to LA. And it was it was not an easy decision because my son was like ooh, like five at the time. Ooh. And um I don't have a place to stay. And my family is in Chicago and New York. Because everybody's like, why don't you go to New York? At least I have family there. But mm-hmm. I was like, no, someone just told me to go to LA. Okay, all right. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So, you know, everyone comes out to L.A. with high expectations. Um, now, you just said, you know, your son's five. Mm-hmm. You know, you just had this major film that happened not too long ago. What were some of your expectations when you when you finally decided, hey, you know what, I'm coming. This is where I'm going to be. What were some of your expectations when you first Well, I think as an actress, <laughs> I, was, I think as an actress, my expectations were, I never thought about like not making it and not being what I wanted Mm. to be. That was just my expectation. I never really like listened to like the hard and struggle part of acting because it was just like, even even, I remember in Chicago, like even if I heard no, it was just no thing for me. It was just like, well, I'm still 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 going to be it. So if you tell me no, I'm going to still keep moving. Mm And I wish I would have kind of kept that more um, mm. of my expectation of whatever I'm going to still be. But I think when I came out here, and because in Chicago, other people, like, I was my only actor in my friendship circle. I'm the only okay. actor. Okay. Out here is different because everybody is right. doing what you do. Right. So then when you kind of start listening to people and listening to things and 
it's just kind of a different type of energy, which is not necessarily bad, but everybody out here is just about, <laughs> about it. And it's not, right. I remember, <laughs> I remember going to my first, one of my first commercial auditions and I walked in and it was like 30, Light skin, curly hair girl. Like I was, <laughs> and all of us had like on green shirts. Like I was, the, oh wow. Like, I was like, there were like thirty me's, <laughs> right? All around here, so it was just different. But I still wish I would have, and I, I've come back to that. The expectation of like, oh no, I got this. This is this is what I do. This is what my gifts and talents are. So my expectation should be high, and and not lowering that even if. Like it is, you know, out here, everybody's doing what you're doing or you hear no a thousand times, mm -hmm. just keeping your expectations super high. Okay, all right, I guess. There you go. <laughs> all right. So, um, pretty much adding on to that question, did your expectations turn out to be more myths or more realities? Um, I can't say my expectations were a myth. Like I said, I wish, I think it is whatever you create in your head. Like, it's whatever you create in your mind state. Mm -hmm. So if your expectation is, I'm going to be famous, I'm going to be, uh, I mean, not famous, like, for, for fame's sake. Right. But if the, I'm going to be at the highest point in my career, if that's my expectation, don't lower it. Like, don't don't minimalize yourself. Gotcha. Um, if that's what your expectation is. Like, I did, I mean, of course I had, I've always been more, um, like, I, I just want to act. Like even I remember doing films and stuff and we would have interviews and the carpets and people were kind of in my face. It was nice, <laughs> but it was not, I was like, I realized like I, I love like being on the set. I okay. love that part. I love just acting and all the extra that come, kind of comes with it. It's nice, but I remember like, well, I'm gonna have, you know, my show is gonna be on that billboard or this and this and that. Mm -hmm. and not, not lowering it because like, oh, it got a little tough. Gotcha. You know, or okay. kind of like, well, I'll just do this thing. And I think for me, you have to know at a point when, um, I think as an actor, sometimes we don't know when to let go and say, I felt like I've done this. Mm -hmm. And so doing certain things for maybe even certain pain or certain levels of thing, mm -hmm. trusting yourself and having your expectations high enough where I can say no to this because I know what I deserve, I know what level I should be at now. Ooh. And and not just accept, you know, because I think we get, because nothing's going on, or I'm not working right now, just right. accepting Just accept anything. whatever comes So I way. think, like, I don't think I had any myths or anything. I think everything I thought in my mind, probably from the time I was very young, so mm -hmm. I'm like, you are the mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all you right. You're the most lady. But I, I'm like, I, I like to keep that because why not? Well, do the most. See, now, woman on a mission, y'all. Woman on a mission right here. So, as a woman of color, um, you're a producer, you're a writer. Did you find that your project ideas were welcome? And if so, how were they received? I'll be very honest. Um, when I did, I have a series, comedy series, Moms, which is on YouTube. And when I did it, I did it, one, because things were a little slow. And then I have a son, a single mom out here acting and, mm -hmm. and, and trying to pursue those things. And uh, it was just like, let me just write. My son, like my experiences were funny, so I would like to say, these are my chronicles today on Facebook. And people like, oh, that's funny. So I was like, let me just write a series about all this. They had no idea what I was <laughs> doing. I just called my friends. But at that time, it was nothing outside of reality show that I feel like depicted me and my friendships. Me and my mm. friends, you know, argue like you're not. Right, you're not. Hi. <laughs> like, you're not hey, arguing, and it's. I was like, man, there's nothing. I felt like there were no shows at the time. Maybe like since the Cosby Show that had a, excuse me, family of um, mm. people coming that centered around like kind of a family com uh, comedy. Mm -hmm. It was just a long time, and I hadn't seen anything. So I was like, well, let me create something, and let me create something that depicts. I feel like. Motherhood, because me and my friends was maybe four of us, and all our children are like two months apart. Oh wow! <laughs> so I was like, let me kind of tell our story. Okay. And when I did do it, it was received very well. Okay. Like I can't say that, like 
everybody who sent it to you was just like, oh my goodness. Like, they were just like, oh, you wrote this? Or, oh my God, this is refreshing. Or, oh, this is so funny. And even I remember taking a class at UCLA because I just wanted to learn more about the skill of writing and mm -hmm. comedy. So I took a, a, a comedy pilot or half hour pilot class at UCLA. And my um, professor, instructor was, uh, you know, white guy in his 50s. And he just pulled me to the side. And he was like, I really need you to stick and pursue this. He was like, we need, we need you. Like he was just very supportive. Okay. And so I never got, even it was my first thing and blessings I was able to, um, my producing partner at the time, we were able to, she helped, we were able to have like meetings with in offices that I would have never thought, you like it was my in. first thing, like I said, I didn't know really right. everything that I was doing, but it was just received well, and even I can say even to this day, people still ask me about that series. So I never had the, like, yeah, I just, I had a great experience as a woman of color for what I had created at that time. Um, it being received very, very well. Okay, well, Moms is on YouTube. <laughs> Moms is on YouTube. Check it out. Check it out. All right, okay, <laughs> so we're going to keep it moving on. All right, so um, how have you been able to navigate the industry so far? How have you made the industry your own? Just, um, like I said, just at, at you know, trusting myself, um, keeping a strong network of friends and mm -hmm. um, a support system. Luckily, when I did move out here, I did know a lot of people. So I always felt, you know, I had a support, you know, even though I didn't have family, I had support. Right. So just kind of, just trusting myself, trusting the process, um, even when things got, I mean, because things did get tough. Like, mm -hmm. um, after, after moms, I put all my money into moms. So after that, <laughs> okay. um, I had to move out my place. And, mm. You know, my landlord came, like a uh, lady. Um, right. So I was like, oh man, I gotta, you know, I gotta move, and you take these risks and things like that. But I remember my dad, who was when I first moved, he's like, what are you doing? Because I had to leave my, I left my son in Chicago, and mm. he was my my dad was not happy with me. He was right. just like. I just don't think this is a good decision or what are you doing, you're a mom. And then when I call, I remember calling him one day, it was, it was a rough, rough time. And I, I was like, Dad, you know what? Maybe you were right, I think I need to come home. And my dad told me, no. He was like, no. He was like, you, you've done it this far? And he's like, so, and I have to say I'm proud of you, but you're just gonna have to stick it out. He was like, you've done it, like, stick it out. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so having that, having just, I don't know, just, it has to be something in yourself too that you just have to, you know, even when it's a weird time or up and down time, something in you just has to say, you know what, this is, and I think when you've done it for so long, just with like, you kind of might as well stick with it. Just keep <laughs> like pushing, just, just keep just pushing. Just keep going because it kind of doesn't make sense to turn back around if you walk that distance so long, it's gonna be even longer to walk back. Yeah. So you might as just keep going and kind of see what could be at the end. Okay, all right. Man, <laughs> champion here. Okay, so if anything, what if anything would you change about your LA experience? I would, hmm, I would change, cause I don't, it, it, it's my experience is what it was and I appreciate even the highs and the lows I would change me coming out of things a little more quicker and not staying in disappointments long and not okay. staying in like oh this is a struggle I would have like how I am now I'm like I would I would be that way so, I could, so it's me getting to my thing quicker and I think you have to learn that with with age and time and things like that, but <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I think I would just, like how I think now, and just like, mm -hmm, girl, like, let's go. We, we get one day to maybe trip or eat ice cream or whatever, and then I got to, <laughs> like, we got to keep this moving. So okay. I, if I could change, I, I would change my mentality in that and not, like, oh, woe is me, or this is not happening for me. Like, I would not stay in that. I know if I don't stay in that, like. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, let's see. <laughs> She's up there reading the cards, so she knows the questions that's coming to you. So following in that question, what advice do you have for a young rising woman of color following in your footsteps? There's another Sonica Camille out there watching this and they're gonna go through the same thing. What advice do you have for them? So I would say, I would say very much whatever it is, like I think when we decide, like I'm gonna be a singer, especially in the arts, I'm gonna be a dancer, I'm gonna be a singer, I'm gonna be an artist. And I was discussing this with my friend. I think our mind state has to be so firm and now, if you want to be this and you want a certain level, like if you want to be and be a te you know teach it, that that's fine. And if you want to be this at a certain at, at a different level, where you're like, man, I want to I want to write, I want to produce, I want to be an actor, I'm, uh, you know, you see Tyler Perry right now, like just mm -hmm. studio, like that's not it's not impossible. But I think we listen to so much as an artist of the struggle side, and I have to go through the struggle, and I gotta go through this pain, and I gotta go through this, you know, we all have the story. I had to sleep in my car and things like that. But that that is that's not fun. Like that's not a no. <laughs> that's not a good <laughs> time. So and you know, even some being so sad where they just, you know, you can kind of fall into a depression and things like that. Like I like I've been there. So not whatever mind high mind state you had when you were excited mm -hmm. about like I'm gonna come out to LA and I'm about to you know do it. Even when that is not it seems like that is not happening. It is happening. Mm -hmm. It's just, you have to be so strong and firm in that mindset. And sometimes that means not talking to other people. And I know that Ooh. sounds very weird okay, because we all want to listen to our friends and things like that. But I was like, I can't sit and listen to how hard it is. I can't sit and listen to how hard it is for a woman of color. I can't listen to, all, not not that these things might not be true, mm -hmm. but if I take all of that in, because nobody tells a doctor, or if you tell me, like I said, if I go to my parents and say I'm a doctor, nobody starts and sits, well, you know it's a doctor, it's gonna be hard, you're gonna have to go through four mm -hmm. years. People are so excited, people mm -hmm. know you're gonna be rich, people know you're gonna be successful. So why is it when we take it as, I'm gonna be an artist, it's, it's all of a sudden it's like, duh, 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 duh. like there's, there's no, no money in thing. that. There's no money in it. What, what, you, what you gonna do for a new job? Right. So I really think you have to not that you don't, but you have to be careful who you hang, you know, who you hanging around, who you're talking to, what vibes you're letting in, mm -hmm. um, of the kind of talk. Because if it's not like we're about to do this, you can get that. Like keep going because you want to get the next one. Like you have to keep it. You know, I'm very much on vibration and energy, so keep it as so so high, like keeping it so so high. And and you know, as a human being, are you gonna be in that mode all the time? No, but that's why I say, like, even for me, like, kind of knowing when to get off social media and yeah. taking every everybody got a comment about like taking in everybody's energy <laughs> from that social media. It'll, it'll be it's too much. <laughs> okay. Like, and everybody's comments because your your path is honestly your path, and then my path is my path, you know, my path, and it's not that I can't take advice or, or listen or be a lending ear, but I think it does come to a certain point where you have to, God, what do you tell, what, what, what is it for me? And that means I have to tune other people out, and I really have to listen, and that's a discipline too, like, because I can't keep calling my friend and having that same girl, I ain't looking at, like, what's the, my agent? Ain't calling me in for auditions and it's it, whoa. Well, uh, 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 I think you have to just kind of like do your own self talk and do the self talk with, with God who created you and said this is what you were supposed to do and you're gonna do it. And then I have to commune with that, with that level. So I, I think the quicker people can get to that, you'll notice something different. <laughs> Drop them nuts. <laughs> She's dropping them. All right. Well, this brings us to our final question and the question that this show is most known for. Ms. Sadika Camille, what is the one word that describes you and your journey and why? Thankful. Very, very grateful. Oh. Um, what is the one word that just comes around to be to gratitude and then I had to learn that in the process too that 
the steps along the way, the small moments, the big moments, the sun outside shining, living in California, palm tree, like every small thing to be grateful for. Because when you are grateful, more just comes. So I just think um, I've really learned that to just really, really have a grateful heart for everything. Okay. Well. <laughs> I've been schooled. I feel like I've been schooled, right? You, you know, I'm just letting you know. So, um, man, if anyone wanted to get in contact with you, let those people out there know, how do they get in contact with Miss Sadika K? So, I am on Instagram, Sadika K, S A A D I Q A K, at Sadika K on Instagram, and I believe Facebook is the same. And then also, my series, Moms, has a page at Moms the Series on Instagram. So, you can, you know, see what we're posting on there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not giving out my phone number or anything like that. <laughs> Don't try to slide into my DMs. See, see, see. <laughs> they gonna slide into her DMs. You no, know, she said don't slide into yeah, the DMs. Don't slide. No, nobody is really sliding in there. I must say, like y'all can slide in a little bit. Let a let a girl know she. You know what? Know. This is a family Tip show, y'all. This Tip is a family show. I'm just letting y'all know it's this okay. is a family Tip show. See. <laughs> okay. All right. It's okay. <laughs> We go in the show on that note right there. Thank you all. Uh, I would like, seriously, I would really like to thank you for being on my show. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. This is like one of the best. And for real. <laughs> Rare birds, we came to represent y'all. Ill state. Ill state. All right. We out. Peace.